One of the common and probably well-known features of the Kuomboka ceremony is the royal badge, the Narikwanda. However, there are other unique features that characterize the Kuomboka ceremony that people don't really know about. Today on News In Depth, we'll be discussing some of these unique features, such as the ecological system of the Zambezi floodplains, the selection of paddlers, and the role of women in the Kuomboka ceremony, among others. I am your host, Macpherson Mukuka. Stay tuned. Few traditional ceremonies are as spectacular and impressive to watch as the Kuomboka in Western province. Perhaps it is because of the water that appears to be everywhere which gives this traditional observance a coat of magnificence. Coupled with the usual impressive turnout of both local and foreign tourists, nothing beats the atmosphere that this ceremony creates. The waters of the Zambezi River that flow and flood the Balosaland Plains are the very reason why the Kuomboka takes place. Loosely put, Kuomboka means coming out of the water, reason why this ceremony takes place by April after the rains have subsided. Baroseland is a massive area, home to over 20 tribes, though the Balozi appear to have taken prominence. Historically, the Balozi are believed to be descendants of Mwambwa, an ancient ruler also referred to as Njemakati, meaning a woman from whom the kingdom originates. The floods that take place force families residing in the lower land of the plains to temporarily vacate their dwellings to the upper land. This movement was developed as a solution to the ecological crisis brought about by a great flood known as Mei Alungwangwa. It is believed that the great floods destroyed people's goods, drowned their animals and people in the early 17th century in Baloseland. In modern day Bulozi, the movement is ceremonial and is considered a major traditional ceremony worldwide, attracting hundreds of tourists. During the Kuomboka, the Litunga or king moves from his compound at Lealui, the capital in Baroseland floodplains of the Zambezi River, to Limlunga, the higher ground. The Zambezi River is the centerpiece of the Kuomboka ceremony because of the flooding. But without the flooding, akuna Kuomboka, no Kuomboka. One of the unique features of the Kuomboka ceremony that most people, especially the non lozi may not know about is its two different meanings. Kuomboka has got two significant meanings. One is uh, coming out of uh, the Litunga and the Lozi people from the flood plains to the upper land. At the same time, it becomes a time of giving homage and thankfulness to the royalty, to the kingship, because most of the villages that are in the most of the villages that are, are in the plain uh, and the land that is within the plain at the, in the forest or at, uh, uh, in the plains, where at one time people were given as rewards. Uh, to the royalhood, not only of the current day, but even of, of the olden times. The flooding in the plains also has a special ecological system that changes every 10 years. The last time the plains were heavily flooded was in 2008, and this year adds another 10 years from the last flood. Komboka is somehow determined by the flooding and when you look at the ecology of uh, the Barossa Plain, it has been discovered that in a period of nearly every after 10 years, the water levels go high. So there's a dependability, like uh, this year, 2018, there's a, uh, uh, the ability, which is the water rises from the ground. The water table goes up. This can be testified from the floods of 1948, as we heard in history, 1958, there were high fl floods. 1968, 78, 88, 2008, and then 2018. So in every 10 years, the water table of the plain goes up high. 
While the flooding in the Balose Plains may seem to be a disaster, to the Lozi people, it is a blessing. Prince Inengum Yunda says it is this very time that the people get to have enough food, especially fish. Uh, the Lozi people are more tied to the Zambezi River per se. Um, its old name is called Liambai, which means a big river. Uh, the thing is, the attachment of the Lozi people to the water and the Zambezi itself can also be got from their old name before they were conquered by the Kololo people who came from South Africa around 1830. They were called Lui people, simply meaning people of the river. Some have discovered that the floods, per se, are not all that a disaster, but they are a blessing. That's why we discover that even in their livelihood is more dependable on the rising of uh, the waters. For example, when you look, what does water bring? It, it is clear that this year there'll be a lot of fish and then a lot of grazing pastures for the animals. The Kuomboka is held either in February, March or April. Lozi culture historian says that although the dates on which the Kuomboka is held are not specific, the level of the water and the phase of the moon determines the date. Kuomboka has been determined to be done either in February, if at all the water levels are high, because that is the time when the Zambezi River washes it, its banks, or it might be also in March, which is called Liatamani, when there's more mass water coverage, or at a time called Lungu, April, like the way it is happening this year, whereby the waters are just somehow stagnant, and they'll be at whichever level. The ceremony is preceded by a hive of activities two days before. On the eve of the Kuomboka, the royal drums known as Maoma are thundered. The Litunga beats the drums proclaiming the pending exodus that will free the inhabitants from the anguish imposed on them by nature. The first lap of drum beating is performed by the Litunga, the Natamoyo, and any other senior Induna. The vibrating sounds from the drums serve as the official summon to the royal paddlers to gather at the capital in Lealui. Once they arrive at Lealui, the paddlers motivate themselves through music in readiness for the nearly six-hour journey. The paddlers assemble in front of the Kuta, a house-like parliament for Indunas, to receive final instructions. Other paddlers will carry and load the Tuyami into the royal barges. I have been into this for quite some time now. I think maybe if we could say about five to six years, although it has been on and off. But always this is an exciting experience. Each year comes with its own unique experience that is incomparable to that of the previous year because there is no one Komboka which is the same as the one that was there before. Last year I was also on the Nalikwanda. It's a very, very, very joyous moment. It's unique. You have to be there to, be, to believe, especially the, the drumming, the song, the singing, and the, the style, and you know, it's, it's unique. It's unique, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. 180 Padras flex their muscles in pushing the royal barge, known as the Nalikwanda, through the waters. Sometimes, the number of paddlers is overwhelming, with some from as far as Lusaka wanting to paddle. If you went close to the Nalikwanda, you will find that it has what we call uh, two villages. Those are segments of the Nalikwanda. Each member of the Barossi community belongs to a certain group or a certain area. And in each area, there's a name or a space that should be occupied by, by each one of us. And therefore, it is our responsibility during Komboka to make sure that we come and occupy that space. Uh, what confuses uh, that order a bit is that each one of us would want to come. Maybe in one family, uh, instead of one person, ten people come. However, the paddlers are only selected based on experience. We have a, a selection team, 
headed by an Induna in charge of badges. Working with other Indunas, they are the ones in charge of selection. As you see behind us, uh, the process began a few weeks ago. So normally, they would choose, they are supposed to choose the best paddlers who have the best skills. Because it's an entertainment, we are supposed to, people are supposed to be entertained. Uh, so their focus is to make sure that they choose people who are able to paddle uh, uh, in the right manner. And Mr. Mbobukwanu attests to Induna Katema's sentiments on selection of paddlers. Historically, uh, paddling involved the, the coming together of people from different parts of uh, Barosland, as it were. Uh, but now, because of the uh, change in times and the, the modernization, uh, there's too much competition. People would want to come in. But mostly, if anyone has to be included on the list of paddlers, they must be people that can prove that they have the capacity, they have the capability, they have the stamina to be able to run through the whole process. But also before the end of the, uh, the actual ceremony takes place, there is a day before where the beginners are also given an opportunity to learn. It's not something that is exclusive only to those that are experienced, because when will those without experience get an opportunity to learn? When the flooding is overwhelming, it creates a sense of excitement among paddlers. They feel that paddling across the plains to Limlunga becomes much easier. When there isn't enough water, sometimes you you run into some dry land or into some island, then you have to push the Rikwanda back again. But when the plains are full, it makes it very easy for, for us. We just go straight route and it makes the journey not tiresome. Well, sometimes you have to disembark, you push the Rikwanda this way, that way. By the time you are in Limonga, you are exhausted. But with the flood, I think we are going to have an easy day. There is less work for us, and there's a lot of excitement and a lot of fun and playing around, and we are going to really enjoy ourselves. Not only us as paddlers, but even the spectators. Uh, because I think as far as we can recall, uh, the highest floods occurred in 1948. And since then, on a pattern of 10-year period, that's when they, they, it has been, having, been happening like this. However, paddling becomes a challenge during Sindabanji, a period of low water levels. Challenges would only come when you don't have adequate waters. Because you get stuck along the way, you need to be getting out and pushing and the like. But now, uh, we are simply going to sail through. Uh, but again, this is uh, one historic uh, event uh, that we want to continue offering to the world as a people. Uh, this is a unique uh, traditional ceremony uh, which we believe uh, it has uh, survived for centuries. And as such, it is incumbent upon us in the current generation to ensure that we continue carrying it on until future generations take it over from us. Shortly after most people arrive in Lealui, the guest of honor comes in, escorted by a heavily armed police. He is then taken to the Kashandi, where he meets the Litunga. Unlike the previous years, this year's Kuomboka ceremony presented yet another unique feature, adding more color to the already colorful event. It was unique in that after so many years of playing host to political leaders as guests of honor, the 2018 ceremony hosted another traditional leader as its main guest. His Majesty Kalonga Gawa Undi, King of the Chewa people of Zambia, Malawi and Mozambique was the honored guest. This elated the Chewa Heritage Foundation Zambia chapter. We were so excited to be invited to be uh, for our His Majesty Kalonga Gawaundi to be the guest of honor at this year's Kuomboka ceremony because it was a very rare opportunity. And that's why we thought we could not do otherwise but to accept it. And we are extremely grateful as the Chewa people to our brothers and sisters, the Lozi people, for having given us this rare opportunity. And the Balose Royal Establishment, BRE, revealed that it was a deliberate decision not to invite political figures 
to officiate at the Kuomboka ceremony because of the past experiences. As Baros Royal Establishment, we have taken a position that maybe it is better if we make this occasion, this ceremony, as traditional as possible, away from all the politics that come and at times get nearer to some uh, very, very big problems that can arise. And that's why we, as Baros Royal Establishment, we decided from now on to only invite traditional leaders to officiate at, uh, at, uh, at uh, Komboka uh, uh, traditional ceremony. The BRE Publicity Chairman Induna Katema feels the invitation of another traditional leader demonstrates the BRE's resolve to embracing one Zambia, one nation motto. Uh, a journey of a thousand miles is begun by one step. Uh, we hope that uh, this will send a message to most uh, people hosting traditional ceremony in Zambia. And we feel that uh, uh, this is the way to go. And therefore, uh, it will harmonize both the cultural aspect and also peace. Uh, Away from all the politics we feel if we build our culture, it is a bond that must grow. We are going to continue inviting uh, other traditional leaders from Zambia and beyond. It is important to share traditions so that we can appreciate each other. This was equally shared by the Chewa Heritage Foundation National Secretary. According to the Ritunga himself, the Ritunga, when they were greeting, when he was greeting and receiving His Majesty Kalonga Gawaundi, said this kind of a thing was the first of its kind. And in, in his remarks, His Majesty Kalonga Gawaundi also said this thing will go down into the annals of our history because it has never happened before. This is especially important for the unity of this country. This is indeed in the spirit of Zambia, one Zambia, one nation. This is what is going to foster this kind of a thing. Meanwhile, Induna Katema has praised government for seconding the idea of inviting traditional leaders to the ceremony. The government and the, uh, the PF government have supported this idea uh, and I think as long as the, the PF government remains in power, we'll be able to work hand in hand with them to make sure that uh, this becomes a traditional ceremony, not, uh, not a, po a political rally. And we are happy to say that the President, His Excellency, uh, uh, His Excellency Chagwa Lungu, uh, has welcomed the idea that it is a good idea and is supportive of it. We would like to see other political parties emulating what the, His Excellency President is supporting. And Mr. Piri is hopeful that such gestures will be extended to other traditional ceremonies across the country. We hope that from now onwards, all the other traditional ceremonies will draw a leaf from what has happened here because this helps to depoliticize traditional ceremonies in this country. Because in the past, uh, traditional ceremonies have been used as political platforms, which, which actually changes the entire meaning. And yet these are supposed to be traditional ceremonies and at the core of it should be tourism rather than politics. So I think this is the way to go. And I can see ourselves at our Kulamba traditional ceremony in August, most likely, although that is up to Kalonga Gawaundi to say, but I can foresee us doing the same, inviting the, the Litunga to come and be guests of honor at our ceremony. Shortly after meeting the guest of honor, the Litunga walked majestically Kutamboka in Lozi with his guest out of the palace to the barge to Bomboka from Lealui to Nayuma Harbour in Limulunga. As the Litunga reached the harbour, the Ngambela bade farewell to the Indunas and people that remained to take care of the village. The Litunga finally boarded the Nalikwanda with his guest, the Ngawawa, Mwenduko and the Mwatota then played the melodious tune called Ifulwa. The tune signaled the start of the journey. One of the songs proclaimed by the Nengwawa is Ndanda Mwalie, 
which describes how great the Nalikwanda was built by cooperative unison of all the people. The second song, Amalabo, praises the royal paddlers for their strength, bravery and tact. It is important to note that most of the activities associated with the Kuomboka ceremony are performed by men. However, women too do have a role to play. We visited Princess Mbuyuana Mbikusitalewanika, who once participated in singing limba songs. She shared with us the role women play in the Kuomboka ceremony. At Realui, when they are sending off, there isn't much singing because the Realui people are losing out because the king is leaving. So it is sort of a sad moment for the people who are in Realui. But at the harbor here in Limulonga, the women, especially the, the members of the royal family, lead the receiving of the Litunga with the songs which are Ruyana, where they are praising the king, the way he walks, the drumming, and they, they inform the people who are waiting that the Narikwanda is still coming or the Narikwanda is nearby in their song. It is a very so, you know, they are very slow songs which many people don't understand, but those are very, very meaningful. Clad in their well-tailored missuses, a female dress, the women make musical noise to which they are known for during the Kuomboka. Princess Mbuyuana feels this adds color to the ceremony. Generally, women are at the back, but they play a very major role because women are the ones who you add color to the Kuomboka ceremony. They are the ones who are at the core preparing the actual packing and putting together things that are coming from Lealui to Limulunga at the household level, even at the palace level. Other than bidding farewell to the Litunga at Lealui, the women are also strategically placed at Nayuma Haba in Limulunga to welcome the king after a six-hour journey. Princess Mbuyuwana, who once played a similar role in her youthful days, is grateful that the women have continued to play their part in the ceremony. Women have also a part to play in the Komboka ceremony, apart from just, you know, they are not left out. They have a major, very unique role, because members of the royal family have their own badges, which are paddled by men, but they are, them, you find that they are not really followed because you have, you know, like uh, the, the, the ones who are like, you know, the, those big, at least high ranking princesses have their own badges which are paddled by, by men, but you just see the men who are paddling, you don't, re you rarely see the ones who are being paddled inside. At about 17.30 hours, the Narikwanda emerged from the horizon on the canals of the flood plains amid shouts and ululations. Once the Narikwanda docked at Nayuma Harbor, the paddlers walked out of the barge. Later, the Litunga emerged from the royal badge, clad in now different attire, the royal navy uniform. He was then received this time around by the guest of honor and later walked together to Limulunga Palace. Upon reaching Limulunga, the two sat in their respective seats at the palace square where they were entertained. As the sun slowly went down, the day's activities also slowed down, as if taking a cue from the dying embers of light that it was time to call it a day. And as if in agreement, the Litunga and his guests retired to the palace indicating the official close of an eventful day. This is why we come to the end of this week's edition of News In Depth. We have been discussing some of the unique features associated with the Kuomboka ceremony that people don't really know about, such as the ecological system of the Zambezi flood plains, the selection of paddlers, and the role of women in the Kuomboka ceremony. I have been your host, 
Mark Fasson Mukuka. Be sure to join us next week for yet another exciting news in death program. On behalf of my camera person, Abram Banda, it's goodbye and God bless you.